G'day mate and welcome back to Factorio with me JD. We're back on the death world and it's another half episode which means another recap episode and I'm standing here in what has pseudo become the middle of Spaghetti Town. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've had a few things happen this week. This week's all been about expansion. Making sure that we can we can expand freely and we can capture some more resources because turns out we sort of got ourselves in a little bit of trouble with not enough resources coming in. Anyway, uh, is that working? Yeah, that's not working, but it's working. Okay, so what has happened? Well, we're going to do all this from map view because, yeah, it's 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 a fair bit of territory to cover down. Um, like I said, this week was all about expansion. So, week one, power, smelters, boring stuff, red-green science, military packs, uh, ammunition, very important on Death World, uh, along with armor-piercing rounds. Um, we started processing bite of goop because we have to process bite of goop to get the the biter bones, the biter meat, and the biter chitin, basically their armor, which we can then process into the different subcomponents. The one we actually wanted was this one here, which is the alien DNA, which we ripped straight from their brains, which is this blue stuff on the belt. And we needed that to make military science. That was pretty much week one. Oh no, week one we also uh, got um, green circuits up and running using a lovely bl blueprint from the last playthrough, along with got in our workshop. Um, that was pretty much week one and week two. Um, we also started setting up defenses. We had a whole defensive line all the way around here. Um, yeah, we can still see some of the belt remains and pipe remains. Sort of, we sort of nailed ourselves in, got ourselves oil, um, did a whole bunch of, well, actually spent like a whole episode just getting ourselves oil and getting ourselves fire. Fire has been the most important thing in this particular playthrough. Um, I'm actually removing all some of the old pipes from our old flamethrower front because we found oil down here. Um, we got oil up and running and we sort of we sort of boxed ourselves into this little bit of area. That's all we could sort of manage to hold for week one, week two, and part of week three. Um, week three, we did slowly expand. We did come out and capture this bit of iron because we we're absolutely out of iron. We couldn't produce enough steel. We couldn't produce enough AP ammo. Not having enough AP ammo on a death world is probably a bad thing. What's slowing down? Oh, that's what's slowing down that belt. You should be red speed. Okay, so we did that. Um, week four came along and we got we got basically the other science packs running. So we got chemical science. We got, uh, where is it? High tech science. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's not called that. It's called utility science now. Utility science up and running. And production science is, oh, buried all the way over here. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a crazy week with just like spaghetti in things as close as possible. Um, as you can see, there's not enough, a lot of room to move through any part of the base at all. Things are pretty much spaghetti in as tight as possible. As you can see, our current shortfall for our base is red circuits, which is due to basically we had to prod mod them because we didn't have any green circuits. If I unprod mod them, red circuits run faster, but then green circuits suffer because we just can't feed them fast enough. So week five came around. Week five came around and we expanded. Um, go away, worm. That's a worm trying to burrow into our base. No, he died. He died. He didn't manage to get through. Um, so week five came along and we expanded. We needed stone desperately because our little stone patch that could is down to 587k. And that stone is all getting turned to brick, which is getting turned into mostly walls. Lots and lots of walls along with brick. Um, as you can see, I have paved the outside of the map. Um, one, so I can run around to the defenses faster. Two, because these lovely worms that are trying to dig their way into my base, um, they actually get slowed down, is probably the best way of putting it. Slowed down by, uh, tire, by paving the ground. The faster the walk speed is, the, um, the harder it is for the worm to dig through. So, I have walls, I have, uh, brick currently. Uh, which has a walking speed of 130. If I get up to concrete, that gives me a walking speed of 140, which will slow them down even more. If I go all the way to refined concrete, they'll give me a walking speed of 150. So that'll really, really slow them down. Um, uh, that's really sort of my best option. And as you can see, there's another... That one got through. 
that one got through because he went for belts and belts have a lower hit points. Uh, can I? Not really. Oh, there's another one right there. I didn't even see him. Yeah, we, we have a few problems with worms trying to dig their way into the base. Um, there's another one right here. Um, yeah, worms digging their way into the base is, is fairly common practice now. Um, on t and so, we, we extended, we grabbed this stone, we grabbed this coal. We didn't really need coal because, funnily enough, um, biter corpses in this particular playthrough are under this tab. Don't, that tab, that tab, that tab. One of those tabs. None of these tabs. Logistics requests. This tab. We have small monster bodies have a fuel value of four, of four megajoules. It's basically the same as coal. Uh, where's coal? Coal. Four megajoules. Nice and simple. Um, we have medium monster bodies, which are a little bit more fuel efficient at 64 megajoules. That's a lot of coal. Uh, big monster bodies are up to 128 megajoules. That's a lot, a lot of fuel. Lot, you know, plenty to keep your base running for a while. And the behemoths, which we've just actually unlocked, we've just hit a evolution factor of where, well, we're 17.3% into behemoths um actually have a fuel value of 256 megajoules which is a lot of fuel um so we're bringing all the fuel down well we're, we're taking fuel one might have monster bodies one this way to turn into coal because if we burn them up once we actually get coal back out which is actually feeding our grenade production so we're using we're using biter corpses to feed the factory to make grenades to throw back at the biters. Yes. Um, on top of that, we're actually bringing it down this way and it's going into the great power plant. Um, the great power plant we just expanded actually last episode and that's all power, that's all power and this is all power. This is all power that needs a radar down there. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we sort of expanded power slightly um, because we're just pushing our limits. We're now fine for power, at least for a little while. Um, and then same week, we also expanded out all of this because our copper patch, after securing stone, we didn't really need it. We needed to have it secured in case we needed it, but we didn't actually need it right there and then. One thing we did need right then was actually copper because with green circuits running, uh, and AP ammo running, we just did not have nearly enough to uh, keep the base running. So we had to go out and grab this copper. We've just managed to grab this copper, and I've actually spent last episode literally just ghosting down a whole um, outpost. It's complete. I ghosted down the smelters as well, which I've already decided we're going to add two more rows to. Um... And we also managed to grab this iron, which again, I ghosted down, and I've already laid down four smelters for that. That's pretty much where we're up to. It's been it's been chaos. It's been erratic. Um, with the night... Um, there we go. Bots flying across the map, just getting all, everything done. Um, with the night attacks mod installed, we can see it's slowly becoming uh, nighttime. Things are about to get nasty. Um, we have... These are actually some fairly small attacks. That's the one I'm looking for. Um, we have some sizable attacks that are about to come in and say hello. Uh, this is going to be the first one. That's not one attack pack. That's about four of them stacked on top of one another. And we're going to enter what I call bullet time right about now. Which is as the first fire hits, there are so many biters dying that we have both the particle, effect, particle effects that were covered in a previous Friday Facts. On top of that... We also have all the goop that's landing on the ground. This pickup tower, that pickup tower. One of these pickup towers is going to grab in a second. And when each biter dies, it has to do, the game has to do a calculation to work out where that crap can go. This pickup tower grabbed it. Um, and as it does that calculation, it slows the game down just slightly. Oh, look, we've got a worm right here. Do not take out my artillery shells. That really pisses me off. There we go. This tower just picked up all that goop there. Uh, we're going to have this attack come in. Oh, no, we're going to have this attack come in. So the smaller ones, the game manages. It's the really big ones the game struggles with. Um, so yeah, we're, that's pretty much what we're up to. We're, we're, we're finally in, we're finally defended. Um, there is a chance I may remove some of the spaghetti we have around the base. 
That's another worm. Like, you're picking on my power pole. Of all things worm. Oh. As I say, two behemoth worms have just dug through here and broken my belt, which is my ammo belt. Which means part of the wall is not getting ammo. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of a game of constant defense and constant rebuild and constant correcting things. Now, as I said, with a 9 attack mod, um, some of these attack parties aren't coming in, but then they're stacking up like three or four deep. And then coming in at once, trying to smash through the walls. That's another worm. Really? Do I have another one coming up right now? No. Um, yeah, we, we, we have a few problems with worms trying to... Actually, you're missing a fire turret. So, we already had a worm come through here and destroy this. Uh, we, we have a few issues with um, worms trying to claw their way into the base. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, like I said, we're up, we're defended, we've, we've, we've done a lot of work. That's another worm, which has broken the belt. We're up, we're defended, we're doing okay. Um, nothing's perfect. Mm, it's a little bit high maintenance, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, this week coming, this week coming, we're probably not going to change the spaghetti base. Um, trying to get in here and rebuild things is just going to be too awkward. One of the things we are going to do is our general sorting system. Our sorting of all our different bits and pieces and bobs. We're actually going to move that out of the base because it sort of ended up right in the middle of the base where we're actually having pro problems both processing the different types of uh, alien ore that comes in, this pink stuff. So the dull pink, the media pink, medium pink, and the bright pink. Um, that's actually alien ore, which we can craft into any different type of ore we want. So that's one of the things we were doing. Actually, it's what we're still doing to keep Purple Science running. Uh, and our bricks. Our bricks are all run from um, alien ore that we've processed into, well, stone. Um... Speaking of that, we actually have whole parts, uh, the, the, the chest is full of stone, so we're just going to go place some more down really quick um, throughout the whole base, because I am definitely going to break the world. Um, so yeah, we this week we're going to be moving central, central sorting um, and central storage to outside the middle of the base it's just it's it's too cramped in here uh at the same time we are this is this purple ones are medium biters medium biter corpses that we need to process into brains um along with uh biter steak tasty tasty biter steak yep you need to cook it up first and make it nice and medium rare and then it turns out it gives you 30 hit points um it's like fish except cooked um so yeah, we, we're going to move um, biter processing outside the base as well. All the different ore processing out, outside the base as well, because I'm really sick of all, all this stuff backing up. Um, and we're probably going to do that first. So that'll let us get more uh, chitin, because that's been actually our biggest thing holding us back. We've finally got 500 and, 520 in the chest, which means I'm finally able to build a power armor. I've actually had all the abilities to... Well, I've had it unlocked since I had about 300 of these things. But even then, if I want shields, that's another 100 chitin uh, each for decent shields and 20 ones for the crap, crappy ones. But, like, that's 300, 300 uh, chitin just for a decent shield. And it's a death world, so I need a few of them. So we need to vastly ramp up our corpse processing. We have plenty of corpse stockpiled, you know. 2.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9 9.6. We've got a few corpses stuck in boxes that we need to process. And these light blue ones are now the behemoths. So we now have behemoths coming in to say hello. Now, behemoth is not the end of the road because we're at 18%. So we're at 18.4% into the current uh, tier at 95%. We actually hit the next tier, which is going to be a whole pile of special, special, special biters. Anyway, that's where I'm going to call it for this episode. This is where the progress we're up to. Next week's going to be an interesting week. We're hopefully going to be able to clean up some of the stuff, that, some of the mess that we've been forced to make, along with expand, because we've now got the space to expand. And then on top of that, um, good question. Not sure. Not sure. 
because um, technically we have all the science packs running. So just running lots and lots of research and actually maybe trying to finally work our way towards uh, rockets. Because there's a couple of texts that are hidden behind rockets that I'd really, really, really like to grab. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it. Pollution is awesomely low. And it's only going to help when I brick up the uh, brick up the world. Uh, we do have artillery down. Can we not? Please not take out the walls. The walls are really expensive, actually. Oh, I'm missing repair turrets. That would explain why this side is having such issues <sighs> there's always something broken uh, we're also upgrading our walls actually that's something I should mention we have concrete walls so normal walls have a hit point of 350 concrete walls take the hit points up to 600 we actually swapped across the concrete walls because they technically cost half the amount of stone which is why we started making them, because they're just slightly cheaper. And another research we actually have is uranium walls, which means we are definitely going to be finding this uranium patch in the near future and start making... Really? It's a poor power pole. Breaking that corner. Yep. Another worm in, another, in the middle of the belt again. Um... And you've complete and worms like, like I said, worms are causing us issues. Just small issues, tiny issues. Uh, I'm just putting repair turrets everywhere at this point. If we can repair faster than they can dig, we're fine. Uh, the ammo belt has no ammo on it, which means there's a worm somewhere. Nope. Somewhere... No, it's been repaired. Okay. Uh, more biters running to their death. Excellent. Um, so yeah. This week, expansion... Or this week, trying to clean up some of the mess. Trying to clean up some of the mess. Trying to improve some of the systems. Um, and hopefully working our way slowly towards a rocket. Because there is... Seismic blast towers. Uh, structure kept of killing worms underground. Seismic blast towers cause friendly fire. These things will hopefully stop the worms from attacking. Um, you know, it does require us to build a rocket silo, get all the prerequisites for a rocket silo, have space science unlocked, uh, get orbital space scanners, which shows worms moving underground. Not that I can really do much about them because they're underground. Um, and then finally, yeah, get the seismic blast towers, which will hopefully stop the worms breaking every different part of my base. Anyway, that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying this series. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. All right, bye.